So the first thing I do is I start with the eyes. I always want to have the eyes correct and I want to be satisfied with the eyes before I move on to the rest. I think that is the most important in a portrait. And if I look at the colors, what I do is I start with the iris and I see a dark brown color. So I'm going to use the sepia, but I also see, you see the light shining on his eyes and you see a bit of that orange brown color. So the burnt ochre. And with the kneaded eraser, I want to lighten the sketch. Especially this, you don't want to have an outline here. Okay, so now I'm going to start with the darkest sepia and then go over the pupil and the edge of the iris. Remember the first layers can be the scariest, but you have to start somewhere, just going step by step. Now with the burnt ochre, let's see how that color will turn out. Now I'm going to use the black and go over that pupil. And keep on going, uh, keep on looking back and forth at your reference photo. But sometimes you don't see your sketch that well anymore. I'm also going to go over the edge because it's really dark here of the iris. The sepia 50. This is a medium brown. Light to medium pressure. Now with the burnt ochre again, the darkest one. And then with the uh, dark sepia again. Go over the edges and you see that and the edge it blends. I'm going to use the sepia 50 with a very sharp point and here as well so I don't lose the sketch. So I'm going to use the middle one, the Payne's Gray 60 because up here I see a shadow. Now with the lighter one, the Payne's Gray 30. I'm going over the edge of the iris to blend. So with the lightest gray, this is French Gray 10. I'm going to go over the highlights and with the sepia 50, I want to darken. And with the burnt sienna, I also sharpened it. Also over the crease. And with the whites, I'm going to go over the eyeball over the highlight as well. With the French Grey 30, I'm going to go over this top part for the shadow. The top part of the eyeball are always in shadow. They're a bit darker because of the upper eyelid casting a shadow on the eyes. Otherwise, if you don't have that, your eye will look flat. Now with the French Grey 10 blend so let's just start with the burnt ochre, going over the crease line. Make sure your pencil tip is sharp. I'm going to use the burnt ochre 50 now and color the upper eyelid here. Let's see this area with the burnt sienna 50. I want to add that pink color here. This is violet brown. So you have the corner of the eye, then you see a highlight, and then there you see that color. So now I'm going to use the lightest burnt ochre. Really light layer, make sure you use consistent pressure. I'm going over all the lighter areas on the skin. Here it's also bright, but still you see a bit of that skin tone. And I have the lightest burnt sienna, 10, here. And I want to go over the areas where you see that it's pink, more pink. But before that, I want to draw a bit of that, a bit of those hairs. So I don't lose the sketch. And then with the burnt ochre 50, because it's more orange. And now with the burnt ochre 10. So now let's use the white to blend this. Um, if it's too bright, you can use the buff titanium. That's more of a cream color. So when I blend with the white, I'm using more medium pressure. Paints gray 60. 
really light, not too dark. So back to the Payne's Gray 30. And then with the buff titanium, I'm going to blend over it. So just keep on going layer by layer. And don't critique your drawing yet. And with the burnt ochre 50, add a bit more of that orange brown. So with the sepia 50, I'm going to draw them light. And then I'm going to blend a bit over them to make them look softer. You see, it does have long lashes. So really light. And with the burnt ochre 50, because I still see a bit of that orange in between them. And then with the burnt ochre 10. So these lashes are a bit darker. So just go one by one. Start light, and you see some lower lashes here. With the burnt ochre 10, you can blend the skin. And with the sepia 50 again, I want to go over the lashes here that are a bit darker. Burnt ochre 50. And then with the burnt sienna 10, not with the burnt ochre 10 because I wanted to make I want to make it less orange. So I'll just blend with the burnt ochre 50. Go over the eyebrow here. Maybe even with the burnt ochre. See that it's darker. And this is the burnt sienna, the darkest one. And I'm going to add a light layer. So now I want to blend this with the burnt ochre. This is the darkest one. Um, I'm going to move to the burnt ochre 50, the middle burnt ochre. Here, I'm going to continue. So all of these layers can look strange, but you will need to keep on going. I'm going to use the burnt ochre tin. Here on the tip of the nose, you see a light, very light. Now with the pink, the anthraquinoid pink, I want to add a bit um, more color here to the tip of the nose. Now with the lighter burnt Sienna 50, we added the shadow with the darkest one, and now I want to blend with the middle burnt Sienna. Now with the burnt sienna tin, I want to blend this with the burnt ochre 50. This nostril can be a bit darker, so with the burnt sienna, and then with the burnt ochre, and the burnt ochre tin, blend. So now with the buff titanium, I can blend here with the burnt ochre 50. Add a layer here to darken just a bit. And now maybe it looks too orange. So next, I want to use the burnt sienna, but not the middle one, because it will turn out too dark. So with the burnt sienna 10 to blend. With the buff titanium, I'm going to blend here with the burnt ochre 50. I'm going to darken here. I'm going to use the Payne's Gray for the dark inside of the mouth and the burnt sienna. And that's the Perlin Brown. So I'm just going over the whole the lower lip now. This is purplish red. Yeah, I can go a bit higher here, really light pressure. And now with the pink. With this pink, I can add a bit here to the skin. You see this shadow? So now with the burnt ochre tin, I want to blend. And with the buff titanium, blend this. And with the burnt ochre tin, I want to blend it. 
with the skin around it. Let's see if we can add a layer of the pink. Remove this upper lip, also see a bit of that more pink color here. And maybe another color, another layer of the red. This is russet. Let's try to go over this with, this is the burnt sienna tin. Let's see if we can desaturate the color a bit. Burnt ochre tin. Let me see the skin. So, because I also see a bit of that pink. Uh, this is the burnt sienna tin. Very lightly here. Need to blend it a bit more. So with the burnt ochre tin. With the burnt ochre 50. Use the pink now. I don't see a lot of pink here, just here on the cheek. With the burnt sienna tin. This is the raw umber tin. And because the skin is really light on this side, with the raw umber 50, I do want to add this darker shadow on the cheek. And now with the raw umber tin, I'm still using light pressure because first I want to get the colors and the values right before I start burnishing if I need to. So how I blend is by layering. Lots of layering. So with the darkest burnt ochre, you see I'm using these tiny if I do it slow, you see that tiny circular movements because you don't want to see any back and forth. Uh, with the first few layers, I do just color more like this and you see some of these back and forth strokes, but the more layers you add, you don't want to see that, you don't want to see those lines anymore. So what I do is then I use this circulation technique and then I use light pressure. Make sure, so the more layers you have, the more mindful you want to be about how you put your layers down. Now another layer with the Burnt Ochre 50. Now you can see that I'm already getting a smoother layer here. I'm seeing less and less of the paper showing through and that's because I, I keep on adding layers. The lighter one now, the Burnt Ochre 10. Because here it's getting lighter more orange brown so with the burnt ochre i'm going to go over the eyebrow this is gray blue and i'm going to add a really light layer because i don't want it to stand out too much and now with the raw umber 50 the middle one i want to blend around it and also for this darker shadow you see that see that it's still really light one layer so I think we can even go darker with the sepia 50. First I want to go over, but I don't want to lose the hairline here. So, so now I can continue with the raw umber 50 and with the light gray again. This is the French gray 10. And you see that this area is also darker than here because it's also in shadow from the head blocking the light so this part will also need to be a bit darker this is the burnt ochre 50 and because this is a large area try to make sure that your pressure is consistent this is a great way to practice with that i have the darkest raw umber here so for the hair that's a great color you see that the raw umber it's like a dark blonde light brown color you see that I'm holding my pencil more to the back so that I uh, color with the side of the pencil lead. The raw umber 50, so the lighter one. And then slowly start to blend. First I'm going to use the burnt ochre 50 to the burnt ochre 10. And now with the burnt sienna 10, let's go over this. So with the raw umber 50, and now with the raw umber 10, the lighter one, let's see if I can 
add a layer here so that I don't see an edge from the shadow to the midtone to the highlight, remember? So the raw umber is a beautiful color to use to desaturate the skin tone if it's turning out too pink or too orange. So my eyes are really dark on this side, darkest burnt ochre. And then after this layer, I'm going to go over it with the raw umber to desaturate the color a bit. I think I'm going to use the raw umber 50. Yeah, light pressure, otherwise it will turn out too dark. With the raw umber 10, I'm going to blend with the buff titanium. I want to start to blend here, use more pressure and soften the layers, make them more smoother. Uh, with the burnt ochre 10, so with the burnt ochre 10, I want to blend over this. I can also go over the cheek here with the buff titanium. I'm using more pressure here. So with these final layers, you want to get rid of that white of the paper showing through. So you will carefully, with a circular motion, you will carefully color in all that pigment into the paper. So this is smooth paper, so you don't have a lot of tooth. But still you want to just nicely blend it all in. So I'm blending with the white now. This just can all be a bit lighter. And then if it's too bright, I go over it with the buff titanium. With the burnt sienna tin. And I want to, because I see the raw umber here, don't want it to look too gray. So gently, I'm using light pressure now. When I add a, a color, I use light pressure to just glaze it. Yeah, this is the uh, buff titanium. Starting to use more pressure with the raw umber tin. I think I can darken here a bit. So I'm using light to medium pressure. The raw umber 50, a layer of the darker, because here I see it's darker, lighter raw umber. The burnt ochre 10. Starting with the raw umber 50. Now with the raw umber, I'm going to look at where I see that it's darker. Now I want to use the sepia, and I have the sepia 50 here. Now with the sepia 10, I want to blend over this first. And here, this area where I see that it's lighter, so here, I want to use the buff titanium and gently blend this, the hairline here. So I want to use the Burnt Ochre 50. You see that if you compare it with the color on the forehead. So I'm adding a touch of this Burnt Ochre color here. Okay, now with the Raw Umber 10, I'm going to go over this area. Turned out a bit too bright. So with the Sepia, I'm going to start really light because I not sure if it will turn out too dark. And with the raw umber, some also draw some hairs and also go a bit over the sepia to make the color look a bit warmer. You see that's lighter in between the hair here. So that's what I'm creating now. And if you scraped off too much, don't worry, just go back with one of the pencils. And I can just go over this whole area. And now with the burnt ochre tin, or actually maybe the darkest one for those darkest lines here, and then move on to the middle French gray. And then here I can just use the lightest French gray. See that? Make sure that the shirt is on top of the skin. Okay, so just making sure everything is nicely blended. And I didn't think I needed to use the acrylic marker, but I see that I want to add this bright highlight here on the iris. And I also see a highlight here. And this one is 
very bright but I just want to blend over the edge. 